Jersey City School District Board of Education. At this time, I ask everyone to rise for the pledge. Kristen, can you give us the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, do I have a motion to return to regular session? Sorry. So moved. Second. Ray and Tommy. All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion to have. Okay, can I have a motion to approve the meeting agenda, please? I'll move it. Second. Kayla and Bill, all in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carried. Okay, um, we're going to go a little bit out of order. Um, our order is here this evening. So, Mr. Lynch, do you want to introduce him? So, uh, with us this evening is uh, Mark Levy uh, from Nugent and Hausler, who did complete our external audit. So, he's just going to provide uh, a brief uh, overview. And, uh, in your hands. Okay. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I went into much greater detail at the audit committee meeting than I would go through at this board meeting. Um, so, but we went into, as I said, much greater detail previously. Uh, I'll be very brief. The district received an unqualified opinion on the financial statements. Uh, we do an audit of the district. We're required to opine on those financial statements of the district. And the district got a clean opinion or an unqualified opinion. So we passed, but that's probably the most important thing I'll say. Uh, real quickly, the general fund had a deficiency for the year of about $9.3 million. The main cost of that, though, that deficiency was that they appropriated fund balance of just over $15.3 million to help pay for capital projects. Um, the district's expenditures were in accordance with taxpayers' approved budget. And um, so that, that's a good thing. Obviously, you want to live within your budget. And the various funds of the district all have positive fund balances and are being run in accordance with state regulations. That's real quick. I can go in more detail if you like, but I don't know. Okay? All right. Well, I'd like to before I Yep. I said before I go, I just wanted to thank you know Joe and Mike and everybody at the board of for the courtesies extended to us during the audit. It was a pleasure working with everybody and um, say we had no 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 uh, complaints or problems and it was a pleasure working with the district. Well, that's good since we were social distancing from our set. Yeah, even during COVID, it went, it went pretty smoothly considering. Yeah, good. Yeah, that's great news. Thank you. Sure, well, thank you, your firm. Yes, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Thank you. Mike. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. Stay healthy. Have a good evening. Yeah. You too. Good thanks. Morning. Okay, so the next item on the agenda is the Otis platform. Mr. Pantaleon. Thank you, Ms. Lash. Uh, as a follow-up to our education committee, I just want to share with the board uh, an overview of our Otis platform uh, for teachers, and then also uh, just an overview of the platform that we're really looking to launch at the end of the month for um, our parents. So the OS platform is it's linked to a, a single sign-on, and through this, teachers can automatically go to our staff resource and sign on and have automatic access to a, a wealth of information. Where's your mouse? And along with this, we also have the ability to access to the parent logon. Next slide, please. So a new feature to the Otis platform that teachers have been using is a really the rebranded for parents. So through a flyer that is uh, in the board packet this evening and also on the board docs, parents are able to sign up to a group code that is listed below and have access to content in the field of Google Classroom, Chromebook Assistant, and something that we're also working on is building specific folders that are 
really related to our district, uh, for example, open houses, uh, orientation, along with content that is really building specific as well. And so if there is a, a tutorial or a procedure, um, it would be valuable for new families to come in and check it out, or if someone maybe missed a meeting, uh, this is a valuable resource uh, to really use. And along with that, um, our instructional coach, Kim Latinville, has been working on preparing uh, this content and really flipping out of uh, new information to teachers and as well as parents as we progress in school year. And so this is a dashboard that our teachers and parents see when logging on. And through the dashboards, this gives the features of the top courses, playlists, along with featured lessons. So it just allows the user, parents, or staff to check where they are. If they have to uh, finish a course, um, we have some playlists that are created. Uh, for example, we have a mental health playlist that focus on social emotional learning. Uh, those that are featured in Next Generation Standards for Math and ELA, uh, for integration of technology for remote learning. So this gives the user the ability to just key in and have a quick access to a list. And along with the progress tracker, for teachers, once they complete an assignment that leads to uh, CTLE credit, there's a quiz at the end. So a teacher can, if they stop in the way or are finished with the course, it will give them the user really an update and how much they need to do to complete that course. And again, the best thing about this program is it also gives on-demand support. So by clicking the Ask Otis icon, it's a, it's a cute little mascot, uh, the teachers can either get email support, live chat, or schedule a phone call to get on-demand uh, a really reinforcement of what's going on. And that's available for not only our teachers, but for our parents. So say, for example, that uh, maybe that it's, it's not really a help desk question, but maybe a content question, uh, that's where the on-demand support can come in. And the course library, there's hundreds of courses that range from uh, certifications to assessment uh, to remote teaching. Right here we have a, uh, an ASK tutorials where uh, working with our instructional coach developing folders that are specific to the building. And we also have some folders, if we flip to the next slide, that show specific for all the buildings. So if there's a, as I mentioned before, a kindergarten orientation, an open house, um, maybe even a concert or whatnot, procedures, um, sub-orientations, all this can be loaded so our, our staff can access this. And it's good for, we, we really uh, had a great usage from this for our subs. We did a quite an extensive training on our hybrid platform, and it really gives a way to have a repository of information. And again, as I mentioned before, the tutorials we have and also for subs, so it really can create subs and folders uh, for any stakeholder group. And the parent platform, uh, there's just a brief video about an overview of how to sign up and, and really when we launch, what kind of features we'll have. Hi, my name is Kimberly Lattenville, and I'm the instructional tech coach here at Perjervis. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the Otis platform. Um, Otis is an online training and support platform that uses PE for teachers and now also has a feature for parents as well. Um, it is there to help support the distance learning, teach some different skills, um, such as troubleshooting, uh, with things like wireless connections, um, dealing with your webcam, Google Meet, Google Classroom, uh, things with the Chromebook. There are a lot of different uh, categories listed in here, and the parent platform now has a lot of those categories as well. Um, so I'm going to go through first how you can sign up as a parent to join the Otis platform. So this is the form that you will get here. Um, at the top it will give you the URL that you can put in to get to the page here that you would fill out the form. So you'll fill out all of your information. And then as you get to the bottom it's going to ask you for a group code. So our group code here is 10E76A, you'll input that as well. And then you'll be able to sign up and you are all set to start uh, viewing videos in there. If you have any problems when you're signing up, you can simply email the school district, contact us, or you can also contact Tech, the uh, company that produces the Otis videos um, at otis at tech.com and they will be able to help you as well. So once you fill that out and get all uh, signed into the account, you'll be able to see the platform which looks like this. So you'll be in the parent course library, you'll click on that, and then if you 
you scroll down, you will start to see some different categories that you can start watching videos for. So uh, some good ones are Chromebook for Parents, Google for Parents, um, and then even the Parents category there. So for example, if I click on the Chromebook for Parents tab, it's going to bring me to a set of videos that I can watch on all different things related to the Chromebook. Accessing files on the Chromebook, um, we have deleting an app on the Chromebook, pinning apps, signing to different accounts on the Chromebook, and you'll notice the videos are not very long. One to three, maybe four minutes sometimes. So they're really nice and short. They go through a lot of different things that you may be having trouble with at home or just maybe your child is having trouble with that you can now help them through watching some of these tutorials. So those are really great to check out. And again, I would look at Chromebook for parents, Google for parents. Those two would be definitely first, and then also the parents category there as well. And eventually, we'll be adding our own district content to it. Um, that should be coming mid-October, that we'll be able to start adding our own content. Um, if you look at the teacher platform, I will show you that in a second here. Under our course library, you'll see that we do have some district-created content um, for the different school buildings. So we have ASK, and we have HBE, and then we have some other ones. So the PJ Parents one that's created here will eventually show up on your, your account as well. Um, we do have some for the subs, just a general or Jervis one, and then a for our high school and middle school as well. So different tutorial videos that uh, we put together as a district, we can post up here as well. And like I said, those videos will eventually be available to the parents on your account. Um, that folder will eventually be able to be uploaded and we'll be adding videos of our own district content there as well. So if you have any questions about this, you can certainly contact the district. Um, but like I said, you'll fill out the form, you get started, sign up, and then you're ready to start watching some videos. So thank you very much for your time and enjoy your day. It's like she's, she's here. Uh, Kim Ryan does an amazing job. And the nice thing about the platform, which we're going to release uh, at the end of the month, is, is creating specific content is really on demand, too. If we see a need, uh, you know, uh, Kim did a great job in creating a, a kindergarten tutorial for uh, incoming students and, and how to access it. And it's also for parents and grandparents, too, and family members. And this is a, the parent platform is at no cost. I like saying no cost, uh, Joe likes to hear those words. Extension of the Otis platform uh, that we're gonna have on, on our site and, and really be able to uh, share best practices, uh, not only with the teachers now, with uh, our parents and our learning community. Um, with that, are there any questions? Yeah, I have a question. Sure. Who's maintaining that site? Who's caring for that site and getting the information and all that? So, through the parents? Or the, yeah, well, or the for the teachers? teachers. Yeah. The teachers are all doing their own input, correct? Well, so basically the, the content that's provided for the teachers, professional development, it's updated daily. There's new courses that are live, that are scheduled, there's a calendar that it maybe a course is, uh, um, you know, creating Google Docs, right? And so you can access it live through the calendar, and then it, what it does is it gets archived. So there's new content created daily for, for teachers. And that's the same as for parents as well, but for both platforms, the parents and teachers, we can create content with parents access. So who is, who's creating one? Our instructional coach, for the most part. But it's also can, if the building principals have a video they want to submit, or you know, say if Mr. Morata is talking about um, a, a breakdown of, of the procedures for a Halloween break and wants to disseminate, or maybe he's holding a meeting that one can't get to, it can be housed in that area where a parent can look at it and review it later, and then also processes the procedures for new parents. A new parent comes into the district and maybe wants a, an overview of, of you know, different um, parts of or the academic programs or um, you know, some of the programs in terms of electives. So it's really sky's the limit. Um, right now, our instructional course is working on the tech features, but anyone can contribute that has a video that would be beneficial to our parents. So does it all have to be just a parent? Could it be a grandparent? Can a grandparent get on there? And... Any, anyone that's a part of our Port Jones learning community can access it just with a email. 
And it doesn't have to be a poor journalist email, which is true for our teachers. So if you have jmotto at gmail.com, you can sign up for that portal. You'll have access to that content. You can say, hey, Nick, um, what about uh, just to, you know, maybe some more information on, um, you know, maybe Google Slides. How do we create one from home? Sure, Judy, we'll make that and we'll put it there because if you need it, I'm sure other parents will need it as well. But there's an extensive library in various schools. Sure. I think that's the missing piece of my question. Sure. These are not all locally developed videos or tutorials. There's an extensive library of that, but you can also make your own. There's, as, yeah, as we showed in the video, there's ones that are already developed through that parents need support, Chromebooks, Google's platform, and whatnot. But as Mike said to you, we can create it on as well. Any other questions? Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Pantone. Mr. Lenz, did you have anything else to report? So, uh, since Mr. Pantone mentioned the words no cost, I will. Uh, piggyback on that concept in that uh, we did apply for the CEP program uh, for the high school this year. Uh, so what is that? That's the, the uh, meals at no cost uh, for that student group. So last year we applied K through eight and rolled out that program. Uh, this year we did apply 912. Uh, recently we did get that uh, approval. So that's awesome news uh, for our students. So we will be rolling that out. Uh, so parents, you know, know that your students can receive a breakfast and lunch at, at no cost, uh, no matter what grade level they're in this year. So um, that's, I think, just something that is great that we can offer our students. The other thing is, is that we continue to evaluate uh, some of the uh, items that we can serve. And one of the things that recently was uh, added uh, was actually Boar's Head Deli Meat. So uh, that is something that we're going to be offering our, our students as well. Uh, so that actually was received uh, the other day uh, by the Food Service Department. So they're going to be rolling that out as well. And I really just want to echo the comments of, of thanking the business office. Really, they do an amazing job, especially this year. Uh, you know, I know there was a mention of social distancing. They, they pulled it off and the auditors as well. It was really you know, a sight to see, but they really just do an awesome job. So. Thank you to everyone. Mr. Pantelin, do you have anything? Thank you. Yes. Uh, I just want to review uh, just a, a you know, brief overview of the Choose meeting that was held on Thursday, October 1st. So we met, we gave Choose fans for the Committee of Education, Wellness, and Safety. I thank Mr. Lance for that uh, very, very good appropriate acronym. And so one thing that we really discussed is, is looking at uh, specifically the purchase of new Chromebooks. Uh, so we purchased new Chromebooks and uh, we also put an additional order of 250 Chromebooks. And with that recent purchase, that will put us in a uh, true one-to-one -one device to student ratio and also afford us the opportunity to provide it to staff as well. Uh, so we disseminated a survey to, uh, to really identify immediate needs. So we're very uh, proud of our, our technology department and the hard work that they've done to for students uh, true one-to-one -one along with their staff. Uh, along that meeting, we discussed nurse communication. Uh, Annie Foster, as the nurse coordinator, has done a tremendous job in facilitating the meeting of the nurses and also really breaking down the Department of Health of new information, which is fairly frequently and the most recent trumps the previous. Uh, so with that, she's done a tremendous job in really uh, creating memos and communication uh, protocols. So tomorrow, I'm gonna meet with uh, the nurses along with Dr. Little, with Mr. Lenz and, and Mr. Sagara to really start planning out a series of videos that the nurses will facilitate, really targeting parents, and then also our students in, in getting them updates in, in health and hygiene, but also how to uh, you know, successfully complete the attestation and really some, some questions and answers. So we're really excited of really integrated technology and the knowledge of our, our nursing department. Uh, along with that, we discussed off-season conditioning. Um, you'll see on the board agenda tonight uh, the, the, the coaches um, that we, uh, we recommended. Uh, Mr. Holland has done a great job in communicating the expectations of what these off-season conditioning will look like in accordance with the New York State um, High School Association along with the, the National Federation. And, and with that, we've also afforded our coaches the opportunity to take a COVID uh, safety course that is of uh, no cost to Mr. Lenz. 
uh, that Mr. Pollock will be introducing to our coaches during the meeting. So again, just want to uh, thank you for the time and, and really some exciting things that came out of the latest shoes meeting. And we'll have another meeting uh, next Thursday at 3 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Mr. It, it takes a second. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I wanted to just acknowledge that this evening we have our administrative team here, and while I get to see them on a daily basis, it, it, it's pretty awesome to see you at a board meeting again. And, uh, welcome back. Yes, welcome back. So uh, generally, I just have a, a few ideas in mind, and then I just speak off the cuff uh, about those ideas, but I wanted to, uh, I wrote down some things this evening just because there are several things I wanted to touch on and I wanted to make sure I contained myself in regards to time. Um, so, but before I get into that, I just wanted to uh, thank Mr. Panavion and Ms. Latinville for what they've done, not only for this presentation, but for this program, this whole platform, and really, um, it, it really just proves that uh, they were one step ahead because this was actually launched prior to us even knowing what COVID was, and now it's taking on this uh, great momentum. So really applaud you, Mr. Bennett, you know, for that for that vision. And uh, I echo what Mr. Lund was saying about the business office, and also Mark, Mark Levy and his firm. They really just come in and very, they're extremely professional, very productive, and really just, and thorough. And so we, we applaud their efforts. So um, anyway, getting to my, my report, I wanted to uh, provide an overview to the board on our response if there is a case of COVID, which is dominating the news and Governor Cuomo spoke extensively today. And as I reported out last week, we did in fact have a COVID uh, positive test result in our school district last week. Uh, so it's important for the board to be aware of the overall steps that are in place. So to review what did take place, um, we received a phone call from the Department of Health uh, indicating that a positive test result uh, was received by them and from there contact tracing begins. And contact tracing is all of the individuals that this individual may have come in contact with. And because of the protocols in the building, the high school being the most complex, we were still, they were still able to do this very efficiently and very effectively and with the assistance of the individual that tested positive. But really, it's just an outstanding uh, example of teamwork. Each of the teachers that were involved were also notified and um, they were told to quarantine. So that's what's currently taking place uh, there. So we report out that one of our students tested positive, but if someone were so inclined and we went on the dashboard, you'll see that there are actually three cases reported on the dashboard. So I wanted to explain that because while I wasn't asked the question, I could have been. So the answer to that question is we only reported the one because that would, and we had to react based on the one because that student actually was in our school. And let's just make it a little more general. The Department of Health has parameters for when symptoms uh, start to show, right? When do they start to exhibit symptoms? And then when were they in contact? And that, that's what then leads to the contact tracing and whether or not individuals in the school need to quarantine. So we only had one applicable positive test of those three when it's when you take it in relation to the school district. So if that's not clear, just give me a sign and I'll just go a little deeper into that. Okay, so basically if someone tests positive but they weren't in school, then there's no connection to school. If they tested positive but they weren't in school for let's say four days, Right, it had been four days since they had last been in school. Or, no, I'm sorry, let's say they show symptoms on a Saturday, but they last were in school on Monday. That is no connection to school based on the time of that, as far as the Department of Health guidance goes. 
So that's why when you see three on the dashboard, if you were to look, it's really only one that actually applies to our, our operations. Uh, so that's um, that's where we were. So all that being said, I wanted to just uh, accentuate that we have exceptional protocols in place. Our, just as a reminder, our students are screened two to three times prior to entering the building. So parents or the students themselves should be completing the attestation that's on our website or uh, you can use the QR code. That's done before they come to campus. As they arrive on campus, we have handheld thermometers at each of our buildings that are being utilized. And then in each of the entrances that are being used, there are thermal scanners that the students must come through. We have, we have staff that then monitor on a laptop that provides the uh, temperature of each student as they're coming through. So uh, these screening mechanisms coupled with uh, our exceptional nurses and the protocols for masks and social distancing, uh, they have created extremely safe learning environments for our students. So I wanted to make sure I covered that. If there are any questions uh, on? Uh, sure. Question. Now this student, whoever came to school with COVID, did they have any no fever, no nothing, so nothing picked up on anything, or it just like, don't know. So, no, because of the screening mechanisms, so uh, let's make a, a few assumptions here. Let's assume that the attestation was complete, right? So I'm not going to say whether it was or wasn't. Let's just assume that they woke up and they said, no, I did not have any symptoms. No, I have not been to the state that's on the travel ban, and I have not been exposed to anybody that has um, test positive. So take that out of the equation. Now they come to school, they go through our, our scanning mechanisms and no fever. They feel fine, they never go to the nurse to report any symptoms, etc. But then two days later, they wake up and they're just not feeling themselves. And then a few, and then two days after that, let's just say hypothetically, right? I'm not speaking about anyone particular, but hypothetically, two days later, they're just not feeling better, and quite frankly, they have a fever. Let's go to the doctor, and the doctor says, let's get a test. And then from there, two days later, the results come in. Now, what about the other students? He was in everybody's home for two weeks. Okay, so that's a great question. So I will not say he or she. I will say the student. The student. Right? So anyone that was established as a contact, even though in our classes the students are six feet apart and wearing masks, the Department of Health says just based on the amount of minutes they were in the same space, and with, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even call it an overabundance of caution, I'll say it with the appropriate level of caution, they say that that's a contact and treat it as such. So those students are, like the teachers, will be quarantined or isolated for the 14 days from the point of contact. So if the student was, for example, uh, not in, they were, less, they were in school on September 25th, then the individuals would be quarantined until this Friday with the return of Monday. So the students, because of it being contacting, per se, cautionary, students and any teacher who was in any of the vicinity of the students' um, classrooms. Not of the classrooms, those teachers of the classroom, of the students. Can I ask you how many teachers we're talking about? Seven. Seven teachers. Yeah. So seven teachers were quarantined plus who knows how many students, which we did. Yeah, out there. Yeah. Uh, well, it was, it's, there, it's relatively low in numbers if you want to look at it that way because please remember at that point we were at the 25%, 25%. which was really yeah. about 18% when you factor in the remote only students. Okay. So in any given classroom, there may have been three students spread out amongst the entire classroom, and or five students spread out amongst the entire classroom. And with the procedures in place, high school's done an outstanding job in passing and, and 
in the hallways, right? The students are on one side of the hallway, six feet apart, and, and the students are, by and large, any, anytime I've seen, have been doing an outstanding job in following those directions. And they get it, they understand the why. We, we do this so we prevent these issues. Now, can I just ask, are the students exempt from work, homework, and, 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 and studying, and, and what did it have to go back on to? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no, because we have a model, and, and I misspoke, it was nine, nine teachers all together. Um, so, because it was a, there was a co-talk classroom, and, uh, no, we have a we have a model that allows for hybrid and remote learning. So everyone is on the same schedule, and that was all by design. Um, um, uh, so you know there are pros and cons to every model, but that was one of the things that that allowed for. And our teachers uh, beginning tomorrow, and for many, if this ever were to happen again, will be providing the instruction synchronously from home if they are in a quarantine well, I just situation. Like be like a if they didn't have to no, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. I didn't mean that. There, you know, there are no, there are no positives of this other than the fact that um, with how quickly the Department of Health, which is yes. outstanding yeah. to work with, um, and and you take their role extremely seriously. Uh, they are, they've been outstanding to work with and that uh, it's all to prevent future cases and yeah, to the best extent you know, possible. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, so on a completely different note, uh, I do have just one more uh, main thing that I wanted to speak about. Uh, I planned on making a message, uh, however, you know, to put out to our learning community, really outlining Wednesdays and a couple thoughts I have on that. Um, but that didn't happen as a result of a, a few other instances. But this concept really comes on the heels of just seeing what's happening and also having multiple meetings with our teachers and feedback from parents. And we're very proud of the way this entire educational or instructional plan is laid out this school year thus far. Again, stressing that no model is perfect. Um, the concept that technology is really the hub of this uh, learning model, as it is for all school districts, and between our IT department, Ken Latinville, et cetera, Mr. Panaglione, they've done a great job in having technology be a part to enhance learning and to uh, create opportunities that would otherwise be impossible. But with the hybrid model, with the remote model, it's also a concern about the amount of screen time, right? So it's particularly at the elementary level, we have students that are on Google Meets for multiple hours, extended over multiple hours, and as you've gotten to know me over the years, I think you know I'm very, I like to move a lot, right? So I don't like to sit still and I like to be active and I like our students to be active because I think there's a huge return on investing. So all that being said, it's important for us to remain steadfast with the synchronous model. It's important for us to keep the Google Meet and the Google Suite as, as the central part of everything we're doing. We need our students to follow that schedule, whether we're remote or whether we're not. But we have Wednesdays in phase three where we're in a remote, all, all remote model. And so what I'm going to do is tomorrow, I will be sending out a memo to our teachers, encouraging them to really expand upon that creativity that they were able to have when they had students in front of them full time, so i.e. October 2019. Let's use Wednesday to still be on the schedule, but also to do project-based learning, student-centered learning, and just to check off of the screen time, at least on Wednesdays when all the students are remote, because I think it's going to give everyone just that little bit of of time, and so I just wanted to share that with the board because I, I, I'm holding firm on my philosophy of the need for the synchronous learning. And it's necessary for the parents, it's necessary for the students, and, and honestly, it's, it's better for, for teachers as far as you know some of the, the structure. And I'm mainly talking about the elementary model 
based on, you know, the secondary level, the students have the periods, and that lends itself to it. But I really, I really want to encourage our teachers to, you know, take those risks with the project base and to really get the students um, doing things other than at, at the screen. So uh, I just wanted to just really get into that. And again, I could, I could go on and on regarding that, but if you have any questions regarding that, or philosophically, why am I um, saying this in that board meeting, I'll be happy to take that. But we will continue to adjust. We will continue to evolve because I know uh, some people in uh, certain positions like to say that uh, we need to reimagine education, and I think that we just need to do constant evolution and constant growth, and that's just going to yield the results that we wish to attain, not through reimagination, but through continued uh, evolution. So, uh, with that, any questions? Otherwise, thank you. Any questions? Thanks. Okay. All right, so the next item is the consent items. These include minutes of the September 15th, 2020 meeting, minutes of the September 30th, 2020 special executive session only meeting, disposal of outdated, unrepairable equipment, CPSE meeting minutes from 9 9, 9 10, 9 11, 9 14, and 925. CSE meeting minutes from 8 19, 9 10, 9 11, 9 14, 9 15. 917, 918, 921, 922, 923, 924, 925, and 928. I'll take a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. Okay. Second. Right. All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carried. Okay, the next item is personnel appointment items. These include the resignation of support staff cook manager position number 541. Leave of absences, appointment administrative special education consultant, appointment support staff vacancy number 2237, position number 489, probationary cleaner. Appointment vacancy number 2239, coaches for the 2021 school year. Appointment vacancy number 2239, co-curricular advisors for the 2021 school year. Appointment instructional staff vacancy number 2239 mentor. Appointment administrative staff vacancy number 2249 position number 358 pupil personnel director. Appointment instructional staff vacancy number 2253 arch teachers. Appointment instructional staff substitutes. Appointment staff support staff substitute teacher aid. Increase of hours support staff for pregnancy and increase of hours support staff food service helper. This time I'll entertain a motion in a second to uh, bring these. Kayla and Bill. Are there any questions? All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. I just wanted to acknowledge that there's you know, certainly a lot there, but since one of the individuals is actually here this evening, I just wanted to uh, congratulate Erica Wallington. Erica was the uh, one of the assistant principals at ASK and um, is with the vacancy in the PPS office, um, has just been approved as the PPS director and is certainly well-deserved, outstanding individual, and really just a, a very talented administrator, and I'm just super happy uh, that she's uh, attained this. And so, congratulations, Erica. Okay, next is a 7 a Port Jervis Middle School eighth grade trip to Washington, D.C. from March 26th to 28th, 2021. I need a motion and a second to bring this item to the floor for discussion, please. Kayla? One second. Who second, Judy? Yeah. Okay. Are there any questions, comments? Yes. Bill? Um, I, I was a little surprised to see that we might be planning this uh, in light of the COVID and everything else. But uh, my main concern is there, is there an absolute guarantee that all monies will be refunded should something happen? We actually have our middle school principal here this evening, but I will tell you that the same uh, agency as who was utilized last year, which was the, very much the case, and they were 
an absolute pleasure to work with. And yes, the, the money was refunded. But Ms. Lane, do you want to uh, come on up and explain? So yes, the company was excellent. Um, they refunded all the money from the last trip. We were scheduled to go in April. And actually what happened was, um, you know, historically kids buy insurance or not. And the kids that have the insurance would have gotten a full refund. And what this company did just after home was to say that um, everybody gets the refund and the only money they collected but from a person who didn't buy insurance was the money that was cost them to buy the insurance. And they were perfect. They gave back in, in, in increments. It was very clear how they were doing it, and they were great. Um, the reason that we're seeing it now is because we just wanted to, you know, have that as a possibility. You know, they tried to raise a lot of money um, themselves, and they got, um, you know, they have the opportunity to get Christmas presents or things like this. So it's a big deal, and we've always started it, right, as soon as we get greater than before. So everybody will be encouraged to buy insurance this time, and we'll see what, how far we can get with that. Gene, and most, I mean, I, I scheduled a lot of travel this year with different companies, and every one that I've dealt with said COVID is excluded from insurance. Uh, they haven't said that to us. Uh, I think it's something that you might want to check because the way most companies are dealing now is if you book anything after this past March and if it's COVID related, you know, refund. So, you know, I would just be concerned that that's absolutely checked in that. But I don't want to see any of these kids get yeah, shot. Absolutely, though. Okay, so we'll have to do it and we will, you know, we have a contract in our hands. We aren't allowed to say yes or no. Right. So I will definitely review it again with the department if that's true. Yeah. But I'm sure she will tell you, but we'll definitely give a couple more questions ahead. And if I just ask, my, my question is, and I know we're talking about different states, and, and if you go to the state, you have to quarantine for 14 days. It could, you know, that, that could pop up at any given time, you know, like boom. You know, you could go to Washington and say, you go to Washington and come and say, boy, come back. Are we, are we responsible for that? Are we going to stay home for 14 days after the trip? Well, we would be, but we wouldn't be out. We would, yeah. We okay. Be out and we will, we will make sure that all the students are made for all just like we... Because of, because of that? Correct. Okay. But we would be doing that proactively this time. We're left we would... We would be doing that proactively this time because uh, you know, we you know this is going on where last year this was already organized prior to COVID. So yes, we would ensure, and I will tell you that Ms. Lane and I will make sure tomorrow that there are no issues with that. Um, do you want to? Yeah, in addition, I decided uh, they, they have a, a refund guarantee protection that the kids, you know, district and our parents' ability to cancel proactively in advance. So, you know, and again, it's just something that you have to start planning it. You know, we, we want to be optimistic, but, we, you know, there's safeguards in there to, to get those refunds. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Next item is the Board of Education goals for the 2021 school year. I have a motion and a second to bring these to the floor for discussion. Bill? Second. Gray? Are there any questions on these? So the superintendent comes up with an amendment to the we discussed it at a meeting over the summer and we also 
had uh, some discussion about it at our board retreat. And then it was from there, I was basically provided with some feedback on that the goals should look very similar and the um, SMART goals and the things, you know, the measurable components of that is something that I should then build off of from the board goals once in a while. That's how I recall the multiple conversations, uh, segments of conversations that we've had on this. Thank you. Are there any questions on these? All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Okay, item number 7C is the revised 2021 PJ CSD student calendar. I have a motion to bring this item to the floor, please. I'll move it. All right, Tanya. Hey, did, Mike, did you want to find out the change? I'm sorry, Did you just want to point out the change? Sure, I'll be happy to. So, uh, on the original calendar, by following state regulations, there were, you're allowed up to four superintendents conference days uh, throughout the year. We had that in a combination of full days and half days, and I think we also had a relatively unique format in that we had some superintendents conference days or half days that were for elementary only. Those would be the ones about Thanksgiving, and we had some secondary only uh, later on in the school year. But let me just dive into what's different from the original approved calendar. On September 1st, there was supposed to be a superintendent's conference day. There was, in order for us to set up this school year uh, appropriately, we'd like to allocate September 2nd as a superintendent's conference day. Uh, so that would have to come away from somewhere. And since we had just begun our school year and the hybrid model, we um, made the decision, I made the decision to not have that half superintendent's conference day on September 23rd. So that gets reallocated, et cetera. So in, in summary, what we would like to do is reallocate September 2nd as a, or allocate September 2nd as a superintendent's conference day. September 23rd is already passed, so we either use it or lose it, uh, depending on what the board wants to do. I'd like to keep the November 3rd conference day because I think that will come at a very opportune time if things continue to be okay and we're in phase three or phase four, it gives teachers an opportunity for us to have pause for a day, do some uh, some professional development, but also give them necessary planning time because quite frankly, they need it. This is, this hybrid model is, is, there's a lot that goes into the logistics and the planning. So keep November 3rd and then make it so that district-wide on November 23rd and 24th, we have two half days of, uh, for superintendent's conference days instead of just having one for secondary and then two for elementary maybe so it's district wide so again all our students are on the same schedule it gives us some time for a some parent teacher conference uh type time and also some time for our teachers to uh really wrap up and uh close out what would be about the first market period and, and again that necessary planning time so that's in a nutshell probably a big one Nutshell, but in a nutshell, that's what the calendar changes look like. Thank you. Are there any questions on that? All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Okay, item 7D is the food service agreement between the Port Jersey City School District and Easter Seals Project Discovery. I'll entertain a motion to second to bring this item to the floor for discussion. Slide. Second. Okay. Is there any discussion on this one? All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Okay, item E, resolution of the Board of Education regarding agreements number 2020-21-02. Be proud that the Board of Education herewith either approves or denies a certain grievance filed by the CSEA identified as grievance number 2020-2021-02. Said grievance has been thoroughly reviewed and considered by the Board of Education in the previous executive session. I'd like a motion and a second to bring this item to the floor. Right, and Tanya, is there any discussion on this one? Uh, 
Right, so are we approving this? Bill, you said approve? Top of that, right? You said, okay, approve. You have second the approval time? Yep. Okay, all well, in favor of approving the resolution? Do we have to be specific on the Yes. Yeah. So we have to. We are. I have to be, I have to be with you. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Be, be it resolved that the Board of Education herewith approves a certain grievance filed by CSEA identified as grievance number 2020-2021-02. Said grievance has been thoroughly reviewed and considered by the Board of Education in previous executive session. Yes. I believe there's a misunderstanding of the earlier denial. Yeah. Ultimately, uh, if you're in support of the district, it's denying the grievance. Yes. Yeah, so oh, you're denying the grievance. Okay, I'm sorry. So now I have to read the Okay. Be it resolved that the Board of Education herewith denies a certain grievance. Filed by the CSEA, identified as grievance number 2020 2021 02. Said grievance has been thoroughly reviewed and considered by the Board of Education in the previous executive session. Okay, so I have a motion by Bill and a second by Tom to deny this grievance. All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carried, thank you. Okay, um, action item 7F is the first reading of policies number 3520, 6550, 6570, 7130, 7150, and deletion of old policy 7150. Oh, I have a motion and a second to bring this item to the floor. Second. Bill and Ray, Tanya, did you want to address any of this issue? Sure. Um, I'll just discuss briefly what we had at our September 29th meeting. We discussed these policies. Uh, table of course, we had previously tabled 65 50 leaves of absences in anticipation of amendments to the new elect election law on the time it off for voting. And we, we basically reported it and put it on for this meeting. Um, policy 3520 on extraordinary circumstances indicates that federal, state, and county law regulation or execution order will govern that there's a conflict of any district policy, procedure, or plan during extraordinary circumstances. Language, the language text is specifically kept broad to allow for revisions if necessary. To fill it in for the wording so it fits into it. Um, the committee agreed to we personalize it and put it on for the first read. Also, um, 6570 remote working, which discusses in what circumstances a district may allow or require employees to work, work remotely. Um, Mr. Rydell has suggested some revisions under the wording under the remote working arrangements and continuity work. All of the wording we approved by all, and that went on for first read. Policy 7150 on remote learning, which discusses in what circumstances a district. Oops, sorry, I just read my notes. It's the same thing. Oh, 7150. 7150. Um, there was confusion about this one at first because we had an existing 7150 and yet we were recommended to create a 7150. So when we pulled up 7150, that was originally our one on, on record was entitled, um, what was the title of that one? Pregnant Students. It was on, on Pregnant Students. And once it was brought to our attention, um, the wording was very confusing. If anyone looked at that policy, it talked about six-year-olds. And um, yeah, it was very confusing wording. And we decided it best to remove that policy because the, the wording was covered under another policy, so it was, no, it was necessary to keep it. So we removed that policy. So that's why you see the removal of policy 7150 and the addition of 7150. So we got rid of 7150, which dealt with pregnancy and students, and, and added 7150, which is about residency, education services for, uh, I'm sorry, uh, title to attend age and residency, entitlement to attend age residency. Um, I realized, unfortunately, after the meeting we were here, that um, accidentally an item was left off of the agenda that another item we had discussed at our policy meeting which was 8241. So I'll see that it goes on to our next meeting for our first read, but just so everyone was aware when you see it on our next read and why it's standing alone after our meeting was had, was that's on patriotism, citizenship, and human rights education. Um, new education law has added, quote, civic education value, our shared history of diversity and the role of religious tolerance in this country, quote, to, has to be in there basically, and they, they reworded, um, they no longer call it the Irish potato famine and instead 
very specific about the wording, um, but it basically is the same in essence. So um, that was it. Was there any, any questions? Any questions? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carried. Okay, item 7G is the external independent audit report for the 1920 school year. Any motion and a second to accept this? Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Okay, item 78 is a settlement agreement and general release between the Port Jersey City School District and employee number 4257. I have a motion and a second to bring this to the floor. Ava? Second. Bill? Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Okay, this time, um, committee reports. Does everybody have any? I think you Nobody's got any? Tomorrow I see the uh, audits will be, and so I will have a report this. Okay. I think the education went last time. Yeah, okay. All right, so the board comments. Bill? Nothing. Kayla? Nothing. Linda? Oh. Okay. Yeah, I just have to change it up tonight. Okay. Um, just a couple of things. I want to thank the, the finance department for the uh, excellent work on the audit. I've been involved in that myself as an employee many times, and I know the amount of work that goes into it. So I really appreciate hearing that we did so well. So that was that was good news. Um, and I'd like to thank Nick for the information um, that, that you presented tonight on the Otis platform because I was very confused on that myself. So. I'm sure that I've answered a lot of questions for a lot of parents and people out there watching. So, and thank you, everybody. Tanya? Just welcome, Erica. Look hard to work with you. Yeah. Ray? No, not at this time. Judy? Hello. Oh, good. Good? <laughs> 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 Okay, so I would like to congratulate Put this in the record. It's all going to be my chair. We got it on tape. And I want to sincerely, again, thank, say to everyone how proud I am to be part of this larger community as a board member. Um, each and every person that's in the walls of these buildings, our students, our parents, we're all doing the very best we can, and I'm so proud of everybody's efforts. I really want to say thank you from the bottom of Okay, next item is the extreme item. Okay, October 8th is Senior Information Night, question and answer session using a Google Meet link and posted in Google Classroom, 6 p.m. on Google Meet. October 9th, progress reports are distributed district-wide. October 12th, Columbus State District is closed. October 13th, College Application Workshop. From 2.30 to 3.30, link the Google Classroom on Google Meet, and PTSA meeting at 6 p.m., location to be determined. October 17th, which is a Saturday, is the PSATs, 8 a.m. at the Fort Jervis High School. October 20th, middle school building tour, Board of Education meetings, starting at 7 p.m. in the high school cafeteria. October 22nd, National Honor Society induction, two sessions, 5 and 6.30 p.m. in the Fort Jervis High School Auditorium. October 24th, PTSA Family Pumpkin Painting Event. More information will be released on this soon, and that will be in the Fort Jervis High School. October 26, 27, 28, and 29 is under class with yearbook pictures from 6.30 a.m. to 2.12 p.m. in the High School Rubber Gym. Um, is there anything else we Okay. All right, so at this time, I'll entertain a motion to... Okay, ASK PTA meeting the 15th, you said? And it's at 7 p.m. and it'll be a Google Meet. Okay. Anything else? Okay, this time I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Well, second. 
Ray? All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? I just want to remind the board that we have a building tour immediately following this. Is there a second session also or just the building tour? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, there was a question. Yeah, there was a question. That question she said we'll discuss it in executive action. We ran out of time. Uh, all right, so I need a motion to enter to executive session. There's no anticipated action after that. Um, Second. Ray, all in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay. So we'll do the tour and then come back to that.